Good morning, folks. We've got some calm in geospace, but not so much the case in the atmosphere. And that calm way above our heads doesn't include electrons, which are starting to get intense. We'll go through it all, starting at spaceweathernews.com. Let's find the last 24 hours on our star, extremely quiet. Couple B-class flare events, minuscule and not at all scary. Those events may be tough to see in 193 angstroms, but not on GOES SXI. If you haven't started adding NOAA's top sun watcher to the repertoire, it will show any X-ray increase at any point location here, the umbral fields, even if the event is not really relevant for geoeffective space weather. Sunspots are the cause of the low flaring, meaning they are few, small, and not magnetically interacting, and at least two of those things are true of the incoming group at the eastern limb as well. Solar wind here. Purple's all you need to see. Plasma speed is dropping and Earth's magnetic field is calm. It is unclear whether another stream will impact this weekend from the northern openings turning across. We'll have to wait and see. Certainly no major transequatorial openings on the disk at this time. There is one space weather index that isn't all that quiet, and that's the electron flux. The dotted hash line is storm level conditions, and we're basically 10 to 100 times more saturated than that. The fact that it has endured for days now is the reason that the total electron flux at Earth is now peaking at the second highest levels in the last year. And give it another two weeks, that left spike will be off the charts. Earth capacitor is gaining potential. We've got an animation from Goddard demonstrating a mechanism for all solar eruptions, they say, big or small. And while it actually seems like a terrific model for solar flare ejecta and coronal jets and solar tornado plasma filament eruptions, they actually discuss the long, photospherically parallel filaments which do not at all look like this and instead lift, accelerate their lift, and leave any reconnection or double layer snapping in their wake, not the other way around. We have gone over that many times and the distinction between causation and genesis of those field snaps remains conspicuous to the point that it strains credulity it's still being missed. Anyway, NASA says they found an Earth-sized icy planet orbiting 1 AU from a tiny, tiny star. They say that means it almost certainly has no surface water in liquid form, and every time they mentioned it, it was as though there was an emphasis on the word surface. Geothermal water world could exist below. We also now know that the gyro system inside Dawn is malfunctioning at Ceres. Interestingly, as Earth was taking solar storms and seeing global electrical disruptions a few days ago from a coronal hole stream, that same stream was simultaneously making it all the way out to Ceres as well. Could be coincidence, or maybe the same solar storm caused electrical disruptions everywhere it went. Folks, I posted Eugene's talk from Observing the Frontier yesterday, one of the most important weather presentations I've ever seen, confirming Billy's work in the lab, and with the link below you can find all the uploads from the conference, updated with every new presentation as they are posted. Severe weather is expected to continue in the United States off the convergence line swinging south from the low moving towards the northeast, Eyes open for flood watches and severe alerts. We'll see some more storm concerns across the globe here, including a null school focus on Oceania so you can watch earth spots steal and hoard atmospheric moisture, ring it into clouds, and drop the weather we see day to day. We've also got shots of our star to close, and we'll do it all again right here tomorrow. It's 5 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.